Have you ever played The Legend of Dark Witch? It's a little 2D platformer on the 3DS and on Steam that kind of mimics the Mega Man series. Well, I should say it was on the Nintendo 3DS and on Steam, because as of last week, it released on the PlayStation Vita and, of course, the PlayStation TV. Why is this important? Well, PlayStation TV compatibility for the game makes this the very first time Legend of Dark Witch can be played on a big TV as a home console game. But enough of the random little facts. Here is my review of the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV version of The Legend of Dark Witch. The Legend of Dark Witch shows a time when the human race finds a special kind of crystal called Sega. It's crystallized magic, and humans are able to harness this magic to leap ahead in technology, to improve the quality of life, to basically make everything about life better, more convenient, more comfortable. But when someone swoops in and steals every last Sega crystal, a crisis happens. In response, a goddess is dispatched down to the human world to track down who stole it and return it to restore that balance. I find the story of the game pretty interesting, but it's not in-depth. This is a mimicry of the old Mega Man games, so you're gonna get story at the beginning, story at the end, and a couple lines of story per stage whenever you find each boss. It's enough to keep you interested, but it's not anything groundbreaking. As I just said, The Legend of Dark Witch is basically a mimicry of the Mega Man games. So the whole Mega Man formula is here. When you start the game, you choose a stage. On the stage select screen, it shows the bosses of each stage, so you basically choose what boss you want to go to first. Each boss drops power up, you can do the stages in any order you want. Just basically imagine classic Mega Man, but with anime girls instead. And that's exactly what this game is. So progression is relatively predictable. Choose a boss, beat it, choose another boss, repeat the process until all of the main bosses are dead, and then you unlock the final stages to complete the story. Now the big thing that deviates from the Mega Man formula is the upgrade system. As you defeat enemies as you're going through all these stages, you collect currency. This currency can then be used at the stage select screen to upgrade your stats. Your max health, the damage that you do, how many lives you have when you die in a mission how much currency you get from defeating enemies, and powering up each of the individual weapons that you steal from the bosses you defeat. And the other is actual in stage progression. So let's talk about that. In each stage, it's basic Mega Man formula. Side scrolling through a stage, shooting projectiles to kill enemies, and your main goal is to reach the boss, grab their power, and complete the stage. But along with this currency, you gain upgrade energy as you fight off enemies in a stage, which is different from the outside stage upgrades. When you're in stage, you have this little HUD on the bottom left corner of your screen that says Speed, Wing, Line, Comet, and Power. As it fills up, you can tap the circle button when it's over a certain aspect and use it for a temporary upgrade while you're in the stage. Use a speed upgrade and your movement speed increases. Use a wing upgrade and you can hover in the air, making you able to cover larger gaps. Or the line and comet upgrades, which are your projectile weapons. This is the big key thing for difficulty. Line and combat can be stacked up to three times, which enables you to send out multiple projectiles at once instead of just one. And if you combine it with the power upgrade, you make them do a lot more damage. Since the bosses do have a Mega Man-like difficulty, stacking three lines or three comets, or three lines, three comets, and three powers, can be absolutely devastating to bosses. It can allow you to completely go around the whole test your powers until you find their weak point, just dodge a little bit and fire off three high-powered comets, over and over and the boss fight is over very quickly. It's just one of those things that's unique to the game and can be exploited to make the game a little bit easier if you're having too much trouble. But that's basically the gist of things. And over the course of the entire game, you've got about 
eight stages or so to go through. If you never failed, you could probably cover the game in about an hour or so. But my first go through the game across learning how the game worked, trying out, doing upgrades, it took me between two and three hours. The better part of three hours to actually get through the store. So for $10, you go on PSN, buy it, download it, and you're getting about three or four hours of gameplay, depending. Because if you complete the game and you want to keep going, you unlock a secondary character who is considerably harder to use. So that could easily double or triple the playtime, but that's all up to you. Now with the presentation. The game wasn't incredibly refined as far as pixel smoothing when it was on the 3DS, and it's pretty much the same way on the Vita, but there is one thing that makes it look a little nicer, but also make it looks a little worse. If you've noticed in the screenshots or in this video, you've got a nice little cropped screen, and on the outside of it you see some artwork of the character and a, and a bunch of HUDs. These HUDs are mandatory. They cannot be turned off, they cannot be disabled. So you're stuck with it like that. And honestly, on the Vita it does make the visuals of the actual game look crisper and smoother, but it's really annoying to know that you can't ever use the game full screen. Because honestly, I would rather not have the HUD there at all. Not worry about my playtime, not worry about how much currency I have until I'm actually at the upgrade screen, and have just the gameplay itself on my screen. But you can't. I've looked and looked and looked. You can't turn it off. But everything else about presentation is great. The music really, really has that old school Mega Man vibe. Frame rate's perfect, load times are short. It's just that border, that HUD. Now, in conclusion, The Legend of Dark Witch has made a pretty much seamless transition from PC and the 3DS to the PlayStation Vita and PlayStation TV. Now, the cropped border design of the HUD is a bit of a disappointment for me, but it's a nice, difficult Mega Man type game that you can play on the go or play on your TV. Reviews to Go rates The Legend of Dark Witch a 9 out of 10. If you'd like to comment on this further, feel free to below or head to the website at www.reviewstogo.com.